Hello, friends. This is Lou again. What is the most used word in all scripture, by far? Have you ever looked it up in a concordance? And just tried to figure out which word is used the most in the Hebrew. It's uh, the name. I think it's number 3068 in Strong's Concordance, which Strong's uh, wrote that in 1890, and he based it upon the King James Version, which is an Anglican Catholic translation into English from the Latin Vulgate. But the name, H or Hebrew number 3068, is used by far more than any other word. And yet it's the very one that they say, we can't find it anywhere. We can't learn. We can't. We, it's not in the translations. It's just in the concordance. But it's in the Hebrew a whole bunch of times. And they don't know how to say it. Well, I, they say that, but they don't want you to say it. So they invented these uh, vowel marks, Nikud marks. Anyway, I'd like to read to you what Yahuwah's opinion is. Just popping open a, a text from Yasha Yahu or Isaiah. Yasha Yahu. Isaiah. Isaiah. It's two components. Yasha and Yahu. Both have three letters in it. Yasha has three letters. It means deliverer or deliverance. And Yahu, that's the name. Now, here's the interesting thing about this. Let me read this chapter 52. Yasha Yahu 52. And we'll pick up with Let's see, how about verse 3? For thus said Yahuwah, You have been sold for nothing, and you are redeemed not with silver. For thus said the master Yahuwah, At first my people went down into Mitzrayim to sojourn there, and Asher oppressed them without cause. And now, what have I here? declares Yahuwah, that my people are taken away for nothing. Those who rule over them Make them wail, or howl, declares Yahuwah, and my name is despised all yom continually, all day. Now, here's the thing that he's talking about, his name. Therefore, my people shall know my name in that yom, in that day. For I am the one who is speaking. See, it is I. He says that his people are being led to howl or wail and his name is being blasphemed continually all day that's because they're not using it they're saying something else like aduni curios dominus hashem god all these weird words that they could not have possibly existed psalm 102 isn't it uh, it says that my oh i put it in the beginning of my bynv this uh, Psalm 102 says that this is written for a generation yet to be created that they might call upon the name of Yahuwah. Wow. It's, it's amazing, isn't it, that we don't know his name? Well, very few do. Now, the ones that meditate on his name, he has heard them. And that means that they're studying it. They're talking to each other about his name. And that's what this new book, Tetragrammaton, is going to focus on, the four letters, the vowels. And in Malachi chapter 3, he says that there's a, 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 he hears people talking about his name, and he listened and heard them speaking. And he said, these will be mine. They will be my treasured possession and he, he, he told them, his messengers, to prepare a special scroll, the scroll of remembrance. And their names are going to be written in that scroll. It's a separate scroll. I'm not saying that he's going to condemn people because they haven't learned his name, but he does in the psalm say that, you know, the, the psalmist says, pour out your wrath on those who do not call on your name. Well, the... Uh, the topic today is the howling. 
And I, I like that little gorilla face that we used a few videos back. And I thought that we'd kind of grab that and use it. Why we seem to howl in Yahuwah's ears. Yahuwah has one name. And the preface of the NASB, that's the New American Standard B-I-B-L-E, provides two texts that spe specify what it is. That's Exodus, or Shemoth, 3, verses 14 and 15, and Yasha Yahu, or Isaiah, 42, verse 8. G-O-D and L-O-R-D are not names, but tradition has spread the idea that they are names. Prefaces explain how using G-O-D and L-O-R-D avoids confusion. It's as if words are being twisted into diffusive ramblings, making it seem to Yahuwah that we're howling. The NIV, that's the New American, uh, no, that's the New International Version, attempts to explain the removal of the name, just as the NASB preface does. You ought to look it up in the preface in both. The most popular English translation on this planet right now is either the NIV or the King James Version, depending on whose viewpoint you want to take. But the NIV preface attempts to explain this silly twisting this, the same way the NASB does. We should at least hope to call on Yahuwah's name without him hearing the howling, as he calls it at Yahshiyahu, chapter 52, verse 5. His name is blasphemed all day, every day, because translations removed it. And they admit it. The NASB is a wonderful translation, except for this glaring error. The preface says their own translation has done what they stated was inconceivable. So, wow. As you read the NASB preface, do you detect anything that could be a little off in their approach? Since they obviously acknowledge the significance of the name, and then they explain that they did what they said was inconceivable. Let's read that real quick here. I'm going to put this in your ear so that you can hear it. Let me get my goggles on. The proper name of G-O-D in the Old Testament. See, they divided Scripture. Scripture didn't divide itself. They did it for it. In this, now, this is the preface of the, of the uh, NASB. In the Scriptures, the name of G-O-D is most significant, and understandably so. It is inconceivable to think of spiritual matters without a proper designation for the supreme deity. Thus, the most common name for deity is G-O-D. A translation of the Hebrew Elohim. They mean Elohim. The normal word for master is L-O-R-D. A rendering of, or a translation is what they mean, of Adonai. Or Aduni. There's yet another name, another name which is particularly assigned to G-O-D as his special or proper name. That is, the four letters, Y-H-W-H, and they put in parentheses Exodus 3, verse 14, and Isaiah, that's Yahshua, 42, verse 8. That's where he said, I am Yahuwah. That is my name. Now, we're going to continue on. This name, that he's referring to the Tetragrammaton, has not been pronounced by the Jews because of reverence for the great sacredness of the divine name. Therefore, therefore, it was consistently pronounced and translated L-O-R-D. The only exception to this translation of Y-H-W-H is when it occurs in immediate proximity to the word Lord. That is, Adonai. In that case, 
it is regularly translated G-O-D in order to avoid confusion. Huh? <laughs> okay. Now, they, that, that, that's the N NASB. So they said that it's understandable that the name is most significant, and it's inconceivable to think of spiritual matters without a proper designation for the supreme deity. And then they go ahead and remove it, and they explain why. Tradition. The NIV says this. In regard to the divine name YHWH, commonly referred to as the Tetragrammaton, which is a Greek word, tetra for grammaton letters, the translators adopted the device used in most English versions of rendering that name as Lord in capital letters to distinguish it from Adonai. Another Hebrew word rendered Lord, for which small letters are used. Whenever the two names stand together in the Old Testament as a compound name of G-O-D, they're rendered Sovereign Lord. Wow. Well, <laughs> that's, uh, that's not confusing, is it? Well, yeah. It kind of is. Anyway, I wanted to just point out some of the confusion to you in the, in the, in the preface of your own translation. I was talking to a pastor a few months ago, and he, he was a, a lovely man. He's, he's got nothing against Yahuwah, but he doesn't normally use the real name, you know, which is found more than any other word in the scriptures. And my question to him was, have you ever read the preface of your favorite translation? He said his favorite translation and only one he used was the one the apostles used, the uh, King James Version. I'm only kidding. Anyway, he used the King James Version. He, and I told him it was a Latin Vulgate translation into English by Anglican Catholics. Most people have no idea. They were Anglican Catholics. King James was baptized as a baby and his 12 translators used the Latin Vulgate. And they were Anglican Catholics, and they're still Anglican Catholics. And they spread this into the world so that today people would see the name that was missing in their text. But the world is now speaking English so that they can understand the words that are coming out of my mouth not just my mouth, but anybody's mouth that speaks English, so that his name would be on their lips eventually, because he's training us to speak English. He's going to speak to this people in a babbling lip in a foreign tongue so that they might call on his name and learn the truth. Their teaching authorities haven't taught them his name. So there it is. Thanks for watching this, and remember to like and subscribe if you thought you, this is worthwhile, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye now.